and more and more nations are looking and choosing uh, F-35 to be their new uh, fighter platform of choice. The F-35 programme is obviously huge and it's worldwide and uh, it's great for the UK that we're involved in the production process along with Lockheed Martin. It's a huge programme, the, you know, the, the biggest global acquisition programme for defence. You've got all three US services, uh, you've got 13 international allies involved in the programme, uh, nine uh, nations uh, now operating from home soil, eight services declared their um, initial operating capability. Doing this for any nation on their own would be a significant uh, endeavour. So sharing those costs uh, really helps to promote that uh, global partnership. And importantly for most of those nations, it's also very powerful for their economic growth. Uh, UK industry is a vital contributor to F-35 production and sustainment and as a result the UK enjoys a significant economic return from the programme and in my mind it'd be wrong to characterise F-35 as a, a US aircraft. I think it is and always will be a multinational uh, endeavour. The UK have been part of this programme right from the outset, you know, and, and uh, the government invested uh, £2 billion into the um, test and evaluation stage, the, the system development stage of the programme. And that was a really sensible uh, investment. So I think a lot of the, the absolutely uh, sort of key benefits that the UK got out of that early, quite large investment decision uh, to partner up was it helped in terms of readying UK armed forces for making best use of the jet now that it's here because we've had a long history of participation in the programme. And that involvement early on allowed the UK to place key individuals uh, in areas of the program to really help the UK understand how the aircraft operates. The UK has very much hit the ground running uh, in terms of once the jets have actually arrived in the UK at Marham, getting them going. I mean, it's, it's been a very rapid initial exercise and workup program. It's been quite impressive there. And also there's been a degree to which the UK has been able to influence the integration of, of particular weapon systems within the oncoming blocks of you know, Block 4 in particular of software. You know, we're not just sort of bashing sheets of metal to put on the side of a, of a wing to be very coarse about it. We're really engaged in those key parts of the capability of the platform uh, that really give it its uh, unique uh, fifth generation capabilities. And I think that's what the UK government is now keen to ensure that we retain uh, for the next 20, 30, 40 years. It gives us credibility and it gives us a standing on the on the global stage to be part of that uh, programme. The aircraft you know, it has its, its own tactical capabilities, um, but, but it also brings that um, strength of interoperability uh, amongst our, uh, our key allies uh, and is a really potent um, sea-based, globally deployable um, power projection capability for, for the NATO alliance as well as for, uh, for us in our sovereign capability. Having interoperability with all the other users is great for us. It means that when we work with another partner, allied nation, we're instantly on the same page, we've got similar tactics, we're flying the same aircraft, and it's just really easy to integrate without having to spend ages training and learning another uh, aircraft. You've just got to look at the NATO members that are part of the F-35 programme to see how important F-35, the place it, it holds in in NATO and recent announcements by the Prime Minister about you know, stepping up the UK's uh, defence budget to support that NATO and taking a leadership role within NATO I think is a, a huge strategic importance and the, and the symbology through F-35 is clear.